independent baseball, you know, you get you know, you get fortunate enough to be in a good situation, but you can also be in a bad situation. I was in a situation where you had 500 people come to your game at night. Uh, we didn't have a trainer. We didn't have air conditioning in our clubhouse. It was brutal, you know. And then coming here and being in this kind of environment and what they do here, it's night and day. Just being in a ballpark, you know, all summer and getting to go to work at a ballpark every day was fantastic. That that was a, a, a big part of it. I thought it was beautiful. Um, it's one of the, it's actually the best place to play in the Frontier League, hands down. There's no questions asked about it, and the way they run it, and the front office, and the way they go about business, um, and just baseball in general, and take care of their players and and things like that was unbelievable. I feel that you know Rent One Ballpark has a lot of room for improvement, but it's definitely one of the nicest minor league baseball stadiums I have ever seen. The only problem, I mean, it wasn't their fault, it was that our clubhouse wasn't really done. But, you know, they had, to, they had to rush to get the field ready, you know, for opening day. So, I mean, that was like the last thing they needed to worry about. And two weeks before, you know, game day, we were allowed to go see the construction which was hilarious because in two weeks we're opening up to, you know, 6,000 people and we still haven't put in the seats. Getting everything ready for opening day, I kind of wanted to take a 12-gauge shotgun, put it in my mouth and release the trigger. Uh, we all had stuff to do, so it was kind of like we were doing our stuff while the stadium was being completed. So it was, you know, we were working hand in hand with the construction people, helping them out if they needed anything, you know, moving stuff around, cleaning stuff, all that good stuff. We, uh, that's the funny part. We got here in practices. Uh, we started playing at Marion High School or, you know, another um, place, you know, other high schools and Heron and, you know, just uh, any, anywhere we can usually get to go practice, we go practice or we'd be at a gym, practice in the gym. We went to John A. Logan to lift. So um, it, was, it was different because that was the first year, you know, of my eight year career that you weren't in your field with your gym system and stuff like that. So you had to kind of find, find out and figure it out on your own. As a staff, we wanted, to, we wanted to be named the Frontier League Organization of the Year. I mean, that was something that we all felt from day one that we wanted to do. And that was, I mean, that's, the reason why that's so exciting for us is that that, that involves everything, our, our operation, the way we play on the field and things like that. So that's, that's something we really, really set up and we want to put a competitive team on the field. And, you know, being two games over 500 for an expansion team is, is definitely exceeded what we thought. We just want to be competitive. And, uh, you know, like I said, being two games over 500 for an expansion team is pretty impressive considering that um, the expansion team in, in uh, Slippery Rock, you know, I think won, you know, like 30% of their games. So we're proud of it, very proud of it. Because of our manager coaching in other leagues and older leagues, um, we did have a, a quite a few people that have played before and have played at a higher level. So we were able to come and play here. Uh, and as an expansion team, um, it's unheard of. And we actually pushed towards the playoffs last year. I think we only finished like a game out. And uh, people expect us maybe to win 20 games, and we ended up winning 46 and actually pushing for the playoffs. And we're actually, for a while there, about seven games up on the wild card, and, and things happen, you know, during the middle of the season. It's a long season. That's why you got to keep playing every day, and every game is important. But we pushed, and uh, nobody thought that we even gave us a chance of being at the end. And then everybody started really, you know, that's when our name really started coming about the Southern Illinois Miners because we're in a run. So it was, it was great. I mean, we were really excited about uh, the play on the field, um, the promotions, uh, just the response from the community in the surrounding areas, just the excitement level. That uh, We had 5,000 fans here last year per game, broke the Frontier League attendance record. The support of the community is what really allowed the Miners to survive and almost come close to, you know, making 5,000, you know, almost selling out almost every game. I mean, nobody thought that they were going to get 200 and 50,000 people in a season to come to the stadium. That was probably the most impressive thing I've ever seen. And uh, that definitely was a turnaround for this ball club. Community and fan support for the team was fantastic. I, myself, didn't think it was gonna be as good as it was. And every night we were five, 6,000 people and it just wasn't stopping. And it was fantastic. Uh, our fan base went really well. Um, coming into a brand new stadium, you never know what kind of support you're gonna get from uh, your fans and the people around the area. And I, what, uh, what I saw was great. Um, we're sold out just about every night. And 
you know, when you got out and you did your things, everybody knew what was going on about you, who you were and where you played. So it was a great, it was a great experience. You know, we did what we did last year, but we always want to exceed, you know, what we did last year. So more wins, obviously, on the field. And then as far as uh, the, the game experience, we like fans have even a better time than they had last year. You know, we're always looking to add new promotions, um, new giveaways, stuff like that to always enhance the fans' experience. It turned out unbelievable, they said. I think like 7,000 people. It's supposed to be packed this year. I can't wait.